السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن شاء الله we'll continue talking in this lecture about search problems أو search solutions أو search strategies we covered DFS, BFS and iterative deepening last time we saw that they are different in making decisions of which state will be taken off the fringe um, what is in common between all of the three is that we didn't consider uh, the cost of every step at all. Okay, we assume that the cost is one or constant. We didn't consider the cost at all. Uh, today, inshallah, we'll change this and we will study what we call cost sensitive search. Uh, the search strategy that will consider or take the cost of every step into consideration. The first one is called uniform cost search. So in uniform cost search, we will expand the cheapest node first. Now what we mean by cheapest? Cheapest in terms of cost. So the cost for going from the goal state from the start state to the goal state is the cost of the node or the state. Okay? So the next state that will be expanded is the state that has the least cost so far. Okay, that was reached from the state, uh, from the start state, with the least cost among the ones that are in the fringe right now. So let's take an example. Uh, of course, in the beginning we have the uh, the start state only in the fringe. So the cost of the start state, of course, is zero because that's the same uh, same state. So we didn't go anywhere. Uh, so we'll expand the search state, the start state, into D, E, and P. Now, the cost of D is 3 because we go from S to D with the cost 3. From S to E is 9 because this is the cost of this is 9. And uh, from S to P is 1 because that's the cost of this uh, step. Now, which one will be expanded uh, next? The one with, with the uh, least cost or the cheapest one, which will be P. So, P will be expanded into Q. Now, we have... Q, E, D. Now the cost of Q is uh, 16 because that's the summation of the cost of all steps going from the start state to Q. So we have here 1, S to P is 1, and P to Q is 15. So the total is 16, which is the cost of being in that state now. So the, ne the next state to expand is this one, uh, uh, of course, because that it has the cheapest cost, which is 3. So we'll expand D into B, C, and E. Now, uh, the one uh, that is cheapest is, I think, B. So we'll expand B into A. Then we expand E, because now it has the least cost, into H and R, and so on. Okay? So in every step, we will expand the one that is cheapest so far. So next, we'll expand A. Then we'll expand R. Uh, now we have uh, F, uh, we have C, H, F, E, Q in the fringe. So E will be the, uh, sorry, uh, F, sorry, F is the cheapest. So F will be expanded into C and G. Now, I have G on, in the fringe. Should I stop? The answer is no. Okay. We only stop declaring a success when we get out the goal state from the fringe. Now, the fringe has G, but it's not out of the fringe yet, okay? So, the next one to be expanded will not even be G, because G has 10, but E here has cost 9. So, the next one to be expanded would be uh, E, to be expanded into H and R. Now, the goal state is the one with the least cost, so we will expand it, uh, or we will get it out from the... Uh, from the fringe and test whether it's a goal or not. Of course, it is the goal. So at that moment, we will stop and we will declare uh, success. Now the solution is S, D, E, R, F, G. That's the solution that Uniform Cost Search uh, has found. If you uh, notice how the uh, search goes here, it goes into tiers as BFS, but the tiers of cost not tiers of steps in the tree, or tiers of the tree. It will be tiers of cost, okay? So, for example, this is a tier of cost zero, 
this the tier of cost maybe less than uh, six and so on okay um, every color here is a contour of specific range of the cost so you will see that it's not exactly tiers of the tree as we saw in BFS but tiers of cost and we go incrementally into the cost we start with the ones that have the least cost and we add more cost of course as we go uh, into the search space until we reach the solution so what nodes does a uniform cost search expand as we said it's into tiers of course so here is the first tier of cost cost when the cost is less than or equal to one that's just of course a cartoon then we expanded into the, the tier that has cost less than or equal to two and then uh, a, a tier with cost is less than uh, or equal to three at that moment we found a solution okay and that will be the solution that will be returned notice that there was another solution here that that's maybe closest to the start state in terms of the number of steps in the tree but not in terms of the cost okay so that one was the uh, cheapest cost than this so it will process all the nodes with cost less than the cheapest solution first okay uh, we always uh, um, uh, prior uh, ha has the uh, nodes with the least cost has higher priority than others so it will be they will be explored next whenever i see something that is uh, uh, higher uh, sorry uh, less uh, cost or less expensive i will explore it uh, in terms of the uh, time complexity let's say that the solution will cost c star okay and in that solution every tier uh, or every step that i will take will cost at least epsilon okay so the number of steps that i will in, in the tree that i will go through will be of course c star over epsilon okay so i will have uh, 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 for simplicity c star over epsilon tiers so that that's called the effective depth of the solution okay uh, remember uh, uh, previously we, we say s as the uh, the tier the number of tier of the solution but here the cost is is considered so if every step has epsilon then we have c star over epsilon now the time that is taken can be the entire uh, uh, at least the the tier that we have that the, the 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 number of nodes in the uh, will be dominated by the number of nodes in the effective depth which means that uh, it will be uh, b to the power that number of uh, of tiers okay so it will take time of b to the power c star over epsilon where c star over epsilon is the effective depth it's like s in uh, in bfs now how much space do i need uh, in this case again it will be the number of nodes in in that effective uh, depth which will be again order of uh, branching factor b over uh, to the power c star over epsilon now is that algorithm complete is it complete what do you think based on the definition we uh, we uh, mentioned earlier about completeness will that algorithm be complete or not what do you think any answer Can you raise your hand, please, whoever wants to uh, to answer? Ghanim, can you raise your hand, please? Okay, and others also, please, before you answer, raise your hand. Okay, Ghanim, just to be more organized. Ghanim? Why? So it's not about redoing here, it's about reaching a solution. So it will eventually reach a solution. Going through tiers of cost, you will eventually reach a solution. Okay, so that's why it is complete, right? Yes, thank you, Renan. Okay, how about, uh, of course, here we have to assume that 
this, these are two assumptions, of course, in reality, they, uh, they are satisfied, but sometimes they are not. So if the solution has finite cost, then of course it will find the solution. And also assuming that the uh, cost of every uh, uh, step is positive. Okay, in some cases, some very special cases in, in, in the problems, the cost might, be, might not be positive, but uh, if the cost is positive, then it will reach a solution. Now, yes, Hamza? Yes, to inf infinite cost. Um, uh, yeah. Okay, sometimes the solution has a very, very expensive cost that we model by infinity, but it, it is a solution, but it's infinite, with an infinite cost, okay? Uh, you can think of it as no solution if you think that the inf infinite cost is not realistic, uh, but it doesn't have to be infinite in terms of that, uh, that we cannot compute it or we cannot uh, uh, give it a number, but sometimes we put infinity just because the cost is very high, relatively. <laughs> you cannot say this. This is a contradiction now. Practically, is really right. Um, so we, we, sometimes when we model the problem, we put it as infinite. In reality, it might not be infinite. Okay. Yani, for example, um, the cost of a taxi is ne negligible with respect to the cost of a flight, right? Right. For example. So maybe in, in, a, in a model of a problem, I will put the cost of a flight to be infinite because just because it's much, much higher than the cost of, of other steps. Okay? So uh, I model it as infinity. In that case, I will not reach a, a solution. I will not reach, reach... I might not if, of course, all of them. Uh, that's why we said the best solution. If that, that, that's the best solution and I model it as infinite, then I will not reach it. Okay? Is that clear now, uh, Hamza? Um, okay, how about optimal? Is this optimal? Sad? Okay, uh, it seems like you are not very uh, sure. You are not 100% sure. Now, let me ask you, Sad. Um, can this node, you, you look at the cartoon here, uh, can this node be uh, of less cost than this node and still I reach this one before that? Now, if that's the case, then the algorithm is not optimal, right? Optimal means I will reach the best solution first. The best solution is the least cost solution. So can it happen that this node is the best solution, but I don't reach it uh, before that one, or I reach this one before it, can that happen? Maybe. Okay, let's assume that happened. Okay, uh, that that this has the least. This is this has less cost than this. If that's the case, then this would have been in the fringe, and I have to take it out before this, right? Because in I always take out from the fringe the ones with the least cost. So I cannot miss one. So this cannot happen, which means that this algorithm is always optimal, which means that it will always find the optimal solution. Okay, now, say having said that, that doesn't mean, yani, you need to think about two things here. Getting to the optimal solution means that it will find the best solution, but it doesn't tell us how much time the algorithm takes to find that solution. Okay, it might take a lot of time, it might be slow in finding that solution, but uniform cost search will always find the best solution, the optimal solution. It might take a lot of time, and as we will see, inshallah, in, in some of the demos this, le this lecture, it will take time much more than some other algorithms that we will study, but still, it will get the optimal solution. Question, Hamza?
Yeah, that's a, 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 no, of course not. Of course not. So again, the same, the same condition will hold here, that the cost is positive. Okay. Because if the cost is negative, then in this case, I might find this, uh, I might go from this, from here to here with negative cost, and that, that will be the best solution then. But it's, uh, uh, with, with that condition, we cannot guarantee of it's optimal, but with the normal condition, which is the cost uh, is positive, it will be optimal. Okay. Um, okay. Now, um, as I said, uh, uniform cost search is complete and optimal. But does does that mean that it is the best ever uh, uh, search strategy? Of course not. It has its own disadvantage. Okay, which is uh, uh, which will be uh, uh, shown now. Okay, let's, before we, we talk about this, let's look at this. <clears throat> here we have a start state, and here is the goal state. What uniform cost search will do is to try in all directions. Try to find the solution in all directions. Remember, it doesn't know where the goal is. Okay, so what it has only is to test whether we reach the goal or not, but it doesn't know the direction of the goal. So, uniform cost search usually tries options in every direction. Okay, so it will explore the state around it in in uh, kind of waves like that. Of course, waves here are waves of cost, not waves of uh, of steps in the tree. Okay, in the search tree. So, waves of cost. It will go around waves of cost until it reach uh, the uh, it reaches the so the goal, because it is it doesn't know where the goal is. So that's the bad thing, which means that it will take time to find the solution. So that's the uh, the disadvantage. So the advantage is that it is complete. It will find, uh, assuming, of course, uh, this uh, positive uh, cost, uh, um, it is complete and optimal. So it will find the solution, and it will find the best solution. But um, the uh, uh, the disadvantage is that it, it might be slow because... It's like a, a blind uh, uh, algorithm that doesn't see where the uh, the goal is. So it will try in many directions until it hits the uh, the goal. Okay, and we will fix that inshallah soon. Maybe, uh, hopefully, this lecture or at least the next lecture. Here is a demo of how uh, uniform cost search works. So this is of course a, a very easy uh, wallet. This is an empty wallet, and we just want to go to uh, from this state to that state. Okay, what will happen is the following: the uniform cost search will explore the entire space, okay, and in many directions. Not in the entire space, of course, but it, it explores directions in in uh, it will explore the state in 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 the entire set of directions, okay until it hits the uh, the goal again the uh, dots here are not the food items uh, they are the uh, states that we uh, explore before we find a solution it found uh, initially uh, eventually the uh, the uh, uh, the optimal solution but it takes it uh, a long a long time uh, exploring all of these other solutions here is a, uh, now, uh, let me show you a quiz. I will show you a maze now. That's a bit uh, uh, harder than the previous one. I will show you three different uh, demos. And you tell me which one is DFS, BFS, and uh, uh, Uniform Cost Search. Okay? Now, let me first describe this maze to you. Again, it's pathing. So, I have to go from this state to that state or that position. Uh, from that position to that position. Let me... Uh, You uh, have to go from that position to that position. And uh, the dark, of course, the black ones are walls. The dark ones here, the dark blue ones, are uh, the deep, it's like deep water, which means that it has uh, more cost than the light blue ones. The light blue ones are shallow. Okay, so you can assume that the cost going through this area, the, the dark area, is higher than the cost of uh, going to the light area, the lighter uh, blue area. 
okay now let me show you uh, the demos one by one and for each one please raise your hand if you know which one is that among dfs bfs or uniform cost search here's the first one okay let me repeat it again Okay, uh, Mahim. Mahim. Okay, can you take uh, take on the mic, please? Walaikum salam wa Yes. It's BFS. Uh, okay, why not uniform cost search? Or why? It's what? Okay, but uh, uniform cost search will also go to the shallow first. So how can I know that? How can I be sure that this specific one cannot be cannot be uniform cost search? Abdurrahman. So, by the way, the answer, your answer is, is, is correct, uh, Maheen. It is BFS, okay? But sometimes BFS and, and, and uniform cost search are similar because they are going into tiers, but the tiers are different. Now, I'm asking you, how can you make sure that this one specifically is not a uniform cost search? Abdurrahman? That's that's a good that's a good, uh, but of course that doesn't mean that BFS cannot reach the the optimal solution. It, sometimes it can be, but uh, based on what you said, this is an optimal solution or not? No, why not? To the dark. Yes. Okay. Okay, and also again, BFS, uh, also if you saw the pattern of exploration, you will see that it goes uh, into the tiers of the tree without uh, considering the shallow ones, uh, without considering the cost. So it was more uh, um, a regular pattern than, uh, than uh, uniform cost search. Okay, let me show you the second demo now. Thanks, Abdurrahman, and thanks, uh, Maheen, also. The second demo... Let me show you now. Okay, let me show it again. Okay, uh, any hands, any answers? Uh, Said? Wa alaikum al hello. I think it's DFS. Uh, why do you think it's DFS? Really? Um, uh, but but you don't think it goes into uh, tears somehow? Let me show it. So you let me show it to you again. Do you still think that's uh, DFS? Okay, how about others? Uh, Yusuf? Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Yes, very good. And it goes in every way, every dire direction, by the way, if you notice. But it tries to avoid uh, the shallow, the, the deep water. Okay? And eventually it found the optimal solution. Going through only the, uh, the, uh, the shallow one. Okay? So this is uh, UCS. This is uh, Uniform Coast Search. Uh, Said, do you have a question? It, 
Dark? You mean, ah, the dark blue? Yes, of course, it explodes it. No, it, it. It doesn't mean that it will not go to the dark area, but it will give priority to the shallow one because the cost of the shallow one is less. Okay? Okay. Um, now, let me show you the last one. Okay, I, I think it's clear. Let me show it again. Okay, which one is that? Ghanim? It's DFS, right? It goes deep into one direction and, and it continues into that direction until it found the solution, which of course very clearly is suboptimal. Okay, it's very costly very long. It goes actually into the wrong direction and then came back to uh, to the right direction. Okay, so uh, I hope now that the difference between all of them uh, is clear. Okay, uh, in summary, DFS takes the, um, the deepest node first, explores the deepest state first. The uh, BFS explores the shallowest uh, state first and UCS or Uniform Cost Search explores the uh, cheapest one first. Now, in terms of implementation, all of the three can be implemented using what we call a priority queue. I'm sure that you are familiar with queue uh, in, in data structures and algorithms course, and I think also you are familiar with priority queue. So priority queue is a queue um, that in which every item in the queue has a priority, and the one with the highest priority will be out of the queue first. Okay, so it's not uh, first in, first out. It's, uh, it's the, the, the one will be out is the, the one with the highest priority. Time. How is that related to the three strategies that, that we just uh, saw? BFS or DFS or uniform cost search. What is the priority here? The priority depends on the search strategy. So the priority for DFS is higher for the deepest nodes, the, the nodes that has more depth. The priority for BFS is for the nodes or the states that are shallower. Okay, so the priority will be high if the state will be shallower in the tree, in the search tree. And uh, uh, finally, for uniform cost search, the priority will be higher if your cost is uh, is smaller or less. Okay, so if I have in my implementation a priority queue, I can actually implement, uh, I can support with that implementation all of the three strategies in one implementation. As long as I maintain the way that the priorities are assigned to the states. The other alternative of implementation is to have an, a, a one for each, one that is different <coughs> for each um, strategy. So, for example, for DFS, if you think about it, the ones that, the, the, the node that will be out of the priority queue is always the deepest, okay? So, if I have a stack, then the one that was just put into the stack is the deepest one, which will be the one that will be out first, okay? So, a stack will be a good implementation, would be actually the perfect implementation in the case of DFS. For BFS, it would be a queue, okay? Because the uh, the, uh, the first one that was queued is the shallow, is the shallowest one, okay? Which would be the one that will be uh, out first. And in case of uniform cost search, it would be a regular priority queue in this case. So you might have different implementations that would be faster in terms of, uh, of running time, but um, you will have to have the three implementations, three different implementations, one with stack, one with queue, one with priority queue, or you can have just one implementation with priority queue that will support the three uh, different strategies. And you will see that, inshallah, in the first uh, project that will be, inshallah, hosted uh, over the weekend. Um, now, the last point before we move on to uh, to uh, informed search um, is uh, the uh, um, uh, notice that is the note that uh, the search 
strategy will be as good as the model that it works on. What does that mean? If I have a real problem in, in the real world and I have converted it into a search problem, that means that I have a model now of the real world. Okay? Now, the search strategy will try to find the solution within that model. It will simulate, it, 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 will, it will not go to the real world and tries the different uh, possible solutions, right? It does that <coughs> only in a simulation mode, um, which is, of course, uh, indicated or reflected by, uh, or reflected in the search tree that we are exploring. So, if the model is not a good model to the wallet, then of course the search strategy will not give you a good solution. Or it might not even give you a, a possible uh, solution in the real wallet. Let me show you examples of that. Um, and those examples, we see similar to them uh, here in, in, in Doha, uh, and I will show you why. I will say, tell you why. Um, here is an example where I want to uh, go from um, this, let's say, this position to that position. What happened is that the agent here that uh, gives me the directions to go from that position to the other position, in one step, it went through this uh, walkway. Of course, with the car, I cannot go uh, through this walkway. So that's, a, that's not a solution to me. So what happened here is that there was a change in the real wallet that was not reflected in the model that the agent is working on. Okay, so in reality, maybe a street uh, became blocked or a street that uh, was blocked was open or something something changed in the real wallet. Okay, maybe this walk uh, walk uh, way was not there when uh, when the uh, the map was modeled to the agent. Okay. And uh, that, of course, uh, resulted into some, some solution that is not actually a solution. Uh, and we see that, as, as I said, we see that all the time here in, in Doha because of the construction that is always going on. Some streets are open, some streets are uh, closed. Uh, um, all the time there are changes. If the agent is not aware or is not up to date with the new changes in the wallet, which means that the model itself has to change, which means that the search space has to change according to what changes in the wallet, then of course the agent can give me uh, bad solutions. Okay, sometimes we go into a street that is blocked, but the agent tell me continue straight in this in this uh, street, but uh, uh, of course that's not, uh, that's not good. Uh, another example before I will take your uh, maybe questions, um, a similar example, but it's more severe than that. Uh, let's say that I want to go from that start state to the end state. Uh, then uh, what happens is that the the map here was not complete. Okay, so the agent thought that the best solution, of course, the best solution here is to go straight from this point to that point. But the agent uh, didn't see that. Uh, as I said, maybe because the, the map was not complete here, so it suggested some path that goes through the ocean, okay, and and uh, return back to the state. So it's like we have to go through the ocean with our car. So that's, of course, uh, not an optimal solution and not even a, a, a possible solution, again, because of the um, mismatch between the uh, real world and the model that the agent is uh, working on. Um, questions? Sad? Yes. The, uh, for BFS, uh, the depth, yes, yes, the depth, but, but, uh, but, um, uh, it will be, uh, it has to be, uh, uh, the opposite, yani, uh, for, for BFS, for, for BFS, the priority should be higher when the depth is smaller, and the opposite for DFS. 
but it, in both cases it depends on the depth of the of the uh, search of the node okay okay any other questions i see many comments about this uh, google maps uh, uh, problems okay that we see in, in reality okay now uh, one thing before we switch to the the rest of the, of the lecture all of the uh, strategies that we saw uh, so far uh, whether DFS, BFS, iterative deepening, or uh, uniform cost search are all called uninformed search. Uninformed search. And the reason is that they don't know where the goal is. They just uh, check whether we reach the goal or not, but they don't use the fact that we might know that where the goal is. Okay, that's why they are called uninformed. Now we will switch to search uh, strategies that are informed, that are aware of where the goal is. Okay, and we'll see why would that be uh, helpful. Now, let's switch to informed search where we will, um, uh, we will try to find um, a way to go to the goal knowing where the goal is. So we'll, inshallah, uh, cover in this session three things, heuristics, greedy search, and A star search. Of course, we'll not uh, be able to cover all of them today but we will start today now informant search um, now if i know where the goal is then it's better to explore directions towards the goal right that's logical okay if i know that the goal is this direction is this site then i should not go to that site first i should at least explore uh, the uh, uh, solutions on that site now, how can I know that this uh, side or these states besides me are better than the other side? I have to find a way to tell me how far I am from the goal. If there are two states, okay, uh, possible to explore, I would prefer the state, I might okay, think that way, I would prefer the state that is closer to the goal than the other state. So to uh, make use of something like that, or to make, to do this, or to um, to have this idea, I have to have a function. We call it a search heuristic function that will give me an indication of how far I am or how close I am from the uh, goal state. So the purpose of this function, which is called the heuristic function, is to estimate how close a state is to a goal. Just an estimation. It will give me just an estimation of how close or how far I am from the goal state. And of course, this heuristic function will be different in different problems. So I, we will have to design a heuristic function for every uh, uh, search problem that might be different from uh, the, the heuristic function for other problems. Let me show you an example. Here is the pathing uh, problem again. We have Pac-Man here, and the goal state is to find is to reach that position. Okay, so I have to I want to go from this position to that position. What could be a heuristic function? Considering that a heuristic function doesn't have to be perfect, doesn't have to be very accurate, doesn't have to give me the exact cost uh, from that state to the goal state. Otherwise, I don't need to explore anything. I found the optimal solution. But it, it has to, to give me some good estimate of how close or how far any state is from the goal. So let me also uh, uh, explain that the heuristic function, you can think of it as a programming function. It takes an input and returns an output. The input to the heuristic function is a state. So it takes any state in my search space and returns back a number that indicates or that estimates the cost going from that input state, that given state, to uh, going from that input state to the goal state. Okay, so I hope that it is clear and Charlotte will be clear with the examples. So now, what could be a good heuristic function for this problem? Again, I want a function that will give me an estimation of how close I am or how far I am 
from the goal. Usually it is how far? Usually it is in terms of cost. Okay, so I want that function to give me the cost of going from for going from the given state to the goal state. Uh, Hamza. The distance, okay. Uh, what kind of distance? Which, which is called what? Euclidean distance. Okay, so that's this. You mean the straight line distance, right? Okay. So one heuristic can be heuristic function can be the straight line distance. But um, Hamza, uh, please stay with me. Um, that assumes to some extent that Pac-Man can go into any direction and it can go in a straight line to any point. But we know that Pac-Man has only four possible directions, north, south, east, west, right? Yes. V very good. Okay, so that's uh, an estimation. But can we... But of course, it's a very optimistic uh, uh, estimation, right? Because we know that Pac-Man does cannot go this way. Okay, thanks, Hamza. Can we have another heuristic function that might be closer to reality, reality of the problem, but still it's an, an estimation? Uh, Saad? Okay, what is Manhattan distance? You mean the distance in, you mean the distance, the sum of the distance of uh, uh, across across the dimensions. Okay, so Manhattan distance here will be the distance between Pac-Man and the uh, leftmost position here at the same uh, uh, same line. Okay, same horizontal line. So it simulate simulates going from this position to the end here, and then going from that position to uh, to the goal state. Okay, so that's we call it that the sum of the distance here called Manhattan distance. So this is one heuristic function. Time. Is that heuristic function optimal? I mean, it, 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 it is 100% accurate? Of course not. Okay, of course not, because it... Let me... Uh, uh, Faisal, do you have a question or answer? Okay. Very good. Yeah, it's not 100% accurate, but it's it's good as estimate, assuming that there are no walls. Of course, that means that it is, it, the, the actual cost will be higher than that, but this is the least cost, right? And it cannot get into, uh, uh, it, it, it cannot go from this position to that position in less than 15 steps, right? There's no way, because it doesn't go uh, diagonally, right? It has to go, uh, into one of these four directions, uh, north, uh, south, east, west. So that's the least possible. Uh, it cannot go uh, less than that. The cost cannot be less than that. And of course, this is uh, because we ignore the walls. This is still a heuristic function. Okay. And uh, again, the heuristic function doesn't have to be very accurate. But it, it is uh, a heuristic function that will give us a number always uh, that will indicate the cost or estimate the cost uh, between the current state and the goal state, okay? So the other one, this is 15, of course, will be 15. Same, of course, if I go south and then uh, west, <clears throat> I will have the same solution, the same number. Uh, and also, as uh, I think uh, Hamza said, uh, it can be uh, the, Manha the uh, Euclidean distance, okay? In this case, it will be 11.2. Of course, this is much more optimistic than... Uh, uh, than the uh, the Manhattan distance. Okay, so these are two uh, possible heuristic functions here: Manhattan distance and Euclid Euclidean uh, distance. Any question on that? Type. Let me show you another example. 
uh, and that's uh, the uh, on the example that we saw before. I, I want to go again pathing. I want to go from uh, but not Pac-Man going from Arad to Bucharest. So a, a possible a heuristic function is the again the straight line distance between the positions of the cities. Okay, so remember here the state is a city. So given a city, I want to estimate how far it is from the goal state, which is Bucharest. So I can do that if I know the uh, the coordinates. Okay, I can compute it on the fly, or I can have a lookup table like this that will tell me the distance probably in, in kilometers between uh, every state and Bucharest. So for example, from Arad, I can uh, go to Bucharest. Uh, the distance between Arad and Bucharest is 366. Uh, for Bucharest, it's zero, of course, because it's the same city and so on. Okay, so in this case, the heuristic function will be uh, just the uh, lookup table that, that will give me uh, the distances. A third example, which is a really nice example, is called pan pancake flipping problem. So what do we have here in pancake flipping problem? We have four pancakes in some order. Of course, they are of different sizes and they are in some order. And we want to go from any state to the goal state where we order the uh, pancakes in terms of size so with the smallest one at the top and the largest one at the bottom. And we do that using uh, a handle like that that will flip, uh, that will go into one position uh, of between the, uh, uh, the pancakes and flip the ones that are on top of that position. So for example, if we are in that state, and we uh, use the handle here in that position, we will flip these two uh, pancakes. So this one would be at the top and this one would be second. So we will reach this state, okay? So the bottom ones will be will stay the same and the top ones will be completely flipped. So we'll go to that state. If I flip from that position, okay? So one uh, below this one, so if I flip from that position, of course, the bottom one will stay the same. And all of these three on top will be completely flipped, which will result into actually the goal state in this case, which is the right order of the pancakes. If I do the flipping from be below the largest one, then all of them will be flipped and I will reach this uh, I, will, I will reach this uh, state uh, in which the uh, largest one is at the top. Okay, so you understand now the problem and how the states uh, will, how the transition will, uh, between the states will be. So this is uh, uh, what we call pancake flipping. The cost of a pancake flipping problem, of course, the cost of each uh, step is the number of pancakes flipped. Okay, the number of pancakes that, that will be flipped is the cost of the uh, uh, of the step? It's like uh, if I do it uh, mechanically, that that's kind of the energy that is needed to flip the pancakes. It will increase with the increasing number of pancakes. So in this case, the cost because I will I will get to that state by flipping at that position, which means that we have only two to be flipped. So the cost here will be two. The cost here will be three because I flipped three uh, pancakes, and the cost here will be four because I flipped four pancakes. Now the question is, sorry, now the question is, what could be a heuristic function for uh, that problem? Okay, I want you to think about it, and inshallah we will answer this next time. I wanna, uh, before we, uh, we move, we, we, before we stop, I want to remind you uh, that the next inshallah lecture on Sunday, we will have the first quiz, as I uh, sent an announcement, I think, uh, yesterday morning. Uh, the first quiz will cover everything from the beginning until the end of uh, session 2.0, uh, I think, B, right? Which is the uninformed search, which is the, in the middle of this lecture before we switch it to, uh, to uh, informed search, okay? So it will cover everything until uh, we, uh, we mention the examples of the wrong search after uniform cost search. So everything in 1, 2A, and 2B, inshallah. Okay, so please be on time. Uh, you never know where the quiz will be, but we will have the quiz, of course, online, and uh, it will be, inshallah, on Sunday. 
Questions, Muhammad Ahmed? Muhammad? Okay, good. Any other questions? Okay. Uh, any other questions? Mustafa? Mustafa Mahmoud. Okay, Mustafa Gendi. Uh, say it again. I heard diester algorithm will what? I didn't hear the complete question, Mustafa. Can you say it again? Diester algorithm, of course, consider the cost. Okay. But it's it's in a different world here. We we are trying to find uh, a uh, a solution to a gener generic search problem. But if I remember, I really maybe um yes. Um, I have to think about it. You mean it can be uh, generalized to any problem uh, where you have the cost? Yes, of course. Uh, but uh, not sure about the cost. Uh, if I remember correctly, Diasta find all the paths, right? Between any, all, all of them. But we don't need to have all of them here. We always have a start state and the goal state. Uh, so maybe this is why it's not... Uh, it's not good in that in that case. If I remember correctly, Dijkstra find all the shortest passes between every every state to the other, and we don't need that here. Okay, uh, let's stop here, and inshallah talk to you on uh, Sunday. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.